So get this. Uh, and Ro Khanna, U.S. is running low on some weapons and ammunition to trans transfer to Ukraine. As the war in Ukraine stretches into its second year, the U.S. and its allies face an acute problem. Ukraine is burning through ammunitions faster than the U.S. and NATO can produce them. The topic of dwindling munition supplies was front and center during a crucial meeting in Brussels this week. Members of Ukraine Defense Contact Group, an alliance of 54 countries supporting the defense of Ukraine, talked head on about the challenges of continuing to keep Ukraine's military well supplied. The U.S. and its allies have already spent or sent nearly fifty billion in aid. Remember, you could end homelessness for twenty billion. They've sent fifty billion to Ukraine in mi just military aid, plus another fifty to a hundred billion dollars paying for their teachers' health care and salaries and everything like that, and their 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 retirement. We're paying their Social Security. <laughs> Not kidding. Uh, to keep that up and to rebuild its own stockpiles, the Pentagon is racing to rearm and barking on the biggest increase in ammunition productions in decades and putting portions of the U.S. defense industry on war footing, despite America technically not being at war. So what does Rokana say to this? He's supposed to be a progressive lefty. Uh -huh. Rokana, the fact that we do not have enough conventional artillery to send Ukraine should be a wake-up call. What? Most of the top 15 steel producers now are Chinese, and we don't have a single one. The U.S. urgently needs a strategy to become a manufacturing superpower so we can manufacture bombs. The, the United States is running out of weapons. Well, what the hell happened to all of them, Ro? Where is the last place you remember seeing them? <laughs> Oh, you mean the ones that we're not allowed to use internationally because they're a war crime? So we just gave those weapons to the Ukrainians? Well, whose fault is that? Thank God you have all these taxpayers out there to just rebuild everything again. <laughs> what a terrible catastrophe it would be for the munitions industry if they had to start all over from scratch again. All those fat cats would be crying in cups of aged bourbon while looking out over their sweeping empires. Remember back when you had the courage to admit that the Azov were Nazis and then deleted that tweet after the war started? I remember that. Do you remember that, Max? Oh, I remember it well because... Uh, you confronted him, right? When I confronted him after the war started, I just I, did, I didn't even confront him. I just said, "What's your what are your thoughts about this? And he... Sounded like a Reagan era neocon. He was like, we need to fight for freedom and this is a great war. And I remembered that he had in 2018 led the way on blocking arms to the neo Nazi wing of the Ukrainian military. And he, of course, deleted that and then called me Here, a Russian agent. Here's that tweet. Here's that tweet. He says, ever since the Orange Revolution began under President Bush, the U.S. has been complicit in the rehabilitation and spread of neo Nazis in Ukraine. Enough is enough. Our government must stand up to the Azov Battalion and other fascist groups. And now he's saying we need to rebuild our munitions. <laughs> it should be a wake-up call if we, because we can't give more bombs to Nazis, to <laughs> these same people. And here it is deleted. Deleted tweet from Ro Khanna. So, so that I don't... So I don't get when he says that the top 15 steel producers are now Chinese and we don't have a single one. And we certainly don't want fascism to just be in the hands of the Chinese. That was our fashion, that they are taking away our fascism jobs. So to make more weapons and increase our military budget even more so you can all line your pockets with military stocks, get bent, Rokana. How about advocating <laughs> for universal health care instead? So what do you make of this? When he, I, when I saw that, when he did that to you, he he he, he said that he, he implied that you were somehow getting paid by Russia, right? Yeah, because it says on my uh, Wikipedia page, I'm a frequent RT and Sputnik contributor, oh. based on absolutely. I mean, I, I I've gone on their shows, but it's not very frequent. But uh, anyway, I mean, what Rokan is saying is objectively true. The U.S. is struggling to produce enough ammo for this proxy war. It's not the industrial superpower 
that was spawned out of World War II, out of the military economy that saw Rosie Riveter go to work in World War II. I mean, that's it's true. Uh, but what's I mean, what also this reveals is that we don't need those weapons apparently to defend ourselves. So why do we have an 800, why is Congress about to authorize an $850 billion military budget if the US can afford to give away so many artillery shells to the poorest country and most corrupt country in Europe that it doesn't have anymore? Why do we need that if we're not defending ourselves from any active threat? It's to fuel the economy for the upper class mainly. The upper class and the upper middle class who work either work in the arms industry or they're in executive level managerial positions. That's what Rokana is shilling for here. And his wife has reportedly been invested in weapons stocks. He's heavily involved with the tech industry. I mean, look at where his district is. And the tech industry is heavily involved with the Pentagon and the fourth offset competing with China. Pretty much every program that's really pushing to restore U.S. Uh, domestic production capacity has something to do with the military at this point. Look at the CHIPS program. It's all about competing with China on semiconductors and advanced chips. And the U.S. is saying it will bomb Taiwan's superconductor factory if China gets a hold of that island or that, yeah, that country that is actually that, that, that republic that is actually a part of China. Um, the U.S. is going to do that to spur its own superconductor development, bombing a supposed ally. Uh, so so what, what's relevant here, aside from the objective truth and all of the inconvenient truths that Ro Khanna exposes, is that Ro Khanna ran as a progressive. He marketed himself to anti-war and non-interventionist forces as an ally and now we see who he truly is. And this is supposed to be the successor to Bernie Sanders. Yes. Pretty uh, pathetic where his priorities are or revealing, I should say. Boy, I, look, I mean, look at that. That is really, he's so good at doing a 180. He should do stunts for Mission Impossible. <laughs> Let me put this in 2023 terms. America is a dictatorial oligarchy, but we identify as a democracy. Hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Baltimore, San Francisco, Huntington Beach, Rosemont, and Chicago, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Connecticut, and more, and St. Louis. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all our tickets for all our shows.